Just want to make a quick video talking about this new machining process or coating that I had recently got turned on to uh, for coating the supercharger pulley itself to decrease belt slip. Uh, normally you get belt slip whenever you decrease the diameter or size of the supercharger pulley itself while leaving the crank pulley in the stock diameter. Uh, a good way to do that, to decrease the slip, would be to increase the size of the crank pulley while leaving the supercharger pulley the same size. But there are a couple non-benefits to doing that. Um, whenever you replace the supercharger pulley itself, you're upgrading or getting new bearings uh, inside of the pulley here, which tend to go bad very easily uh, in the older uh, setups. So you're getting a fresh you know, bearing assembly, uh, clutch disc on the back, uh, which do get noisy and uh, make a chirp noise, uh, which you usually hear with these older cars. The second is the ease of installation. I mean, to change this, it takes, you know, probably about 30 minutes max, the supercharger blower pulley. To do the crank pulley, it's, you know, much more involved. Uh, there's a lot riskier, you know, risks in terms of doing that as well. Uh, just proper installation is extremely crucial when you're doing the, the crank pulley itself and there's just a lot more things that could go wrong with that. So I try, I, I tend to stick with just doing the, the blower pulley itself for the reasons mentioned. Uh, also, whenever you do the blower pulley, it decreases the weight of the rotating mass versus the stock by, I believe, a couple to a few pounds. Whereas whenever you do a bigger crank pulley, you're actually increasing the weight. And I've noticed people say that you get like a jerking sensation uh, with going from a bigger crank pulley, which you do not get with the blower pulley. The only downside to that that I find whenever you're stepping down to a smaller blower pulley is you get the belt slip when the actual supercharger belt will slip uh, whenever it's trying to rotate too fast and the belt can't get enough grip uh, just because it doesn't have a, enough surface area to grab onto anymore. Even with a supercharger uh, you know, belt wrap kit, as you can see here, this brace that goes across and adds another idler pulley in to put more surface area onto the pulley. I was still getting a 2 to 3 PSI uh, boost loss during wide open throttle. Even with a brand new OEM belt tensioner, the belt wrap kit, and I've tried 2 to 3 different belts and I was still seeing the same results with everything I mentioned there. So I was trying to find a solution to decrease that boost loss or PSI loss, belt slip, etc. Uh, without having to go to a bigger crank pulley. So I got turned on to this company called ZPE, and they make pulleys in-house for basically, I think, CTSVs, uh, Hellcats, and LS Crad. Um, and what they do is they machine a actual coating, or I shouldn't say coating, but they ma machine in grooves almost to, similar to like a file, like a metal file into the actual V or grooves of the pulley. Hopefully the camera's picking that up pretty good. So this is the machined pulley here. And this is the pulley with the quote unquote just anti-slip coating that's put on from it from the manufacturer. As you can see it's very smooth you know inside there. It's just a piece of machine metal with no grooves or anything cut into it. Whereas this one has you know, the, the nice grooves machined into the pulley there. Let's see, let's stack them up. Yeah, it looks pretty pretty obvious from, from this point of view, you can see. And if I take the pulley without any coating on it or machine, I can very easily slide my finger across it. You know, press, I'm pressing down on it pretty hard and it just glides right across. Uh, like there's no grip on there. And then I take the one that I had just done here with the grip tech coating. And I'm pushing you know, the same same firmness and my finger doesn't move at all. I mean it literally is stuck to the, the pulley there. So I got this new pulley coating or machine process done to the 77 millimeter. 
I already have a bunch of logs that I did prior to having that done with a couple different belts so I can compare this. Um, the only new belt that I have that I'm going to add into the equation is this gator back belt which has the grooves you know, cut into it. Uh, hopefully that may help a little bit. It's supposed to alleviate trapped air that goes in between the belt and the pulley which actually lifts the pulley away from the belt. But I've heard that these aren't as strong and they stretch more than uh, like a Gates Green Belt uh, or the Gates RPM Belt of both, which I have. So I'm going to test all three belts out on this new uh, machine pulley here and see what kind of decrease uh, you know, in belt slippage I get. Or if it's the same, I'm going to post it either way and give an honest review of it. And I'll be doing that probably Monday or Tuesday. Uh, so you can see I got the new Gates RPM belt here, which is supposed to be extremely rigid and not stretch at all. And then I have the Gates green belt around here somewhere as well. And then this Continental Elite, which is actually just a rebranded Gator back belt now. I'm going to test all three of those. Let me see if I can show you that. This dust right here is actually from the belt slipping. Let me see. You can see that. That's when it wears away, and when the belt slips, that's when you lose power. Uh, in two to three psi, you supposedly lose you know 10, 15 to 20 horsepower for every psi. So if you're losing two to three psi, you're just basically throwing away you know 20 to 40 horsepower that you've already paid for and you should be getting. Uh, so hopefully this this helps that and gains back those you know, horsepower you already paid for and you already were expecting to be there uh, just by getting this machining process done to the pulley. Yep. So that's about it. I'm going to give that a shot. I'll post up some results here probably midweek and next week. Take it easy.